Hey, it looks like we're live. Hey, hey, everyone, let us know in the chat whether you can see me dancing around like <laughs> a monkey or whether you can't, just so I got a sense of this. And I don't actually even have Facebook open to see if you can see me and hear me on the online Course Creators Facebook group, which is where yeah, we're, we're streaming this live. <laughs> Fantastic. No worries. Well, this is our first live. We're going to be doing more of them over the next week or so, but I'm super stoked to just get in and start talking so we can test all the tech and the back and forth and you can jump on and you can ask me questions and we can see all of that. All right. So Shannon, you want to set us up with the first questions? And by the way, this is Shannon. She is our community manager and uh, social media manager here at Live Your Message. And she's been with us for a couple of years and she's absolutely awesome. And so, you know, some of the clever things that you might see were written by her. Of course, a lot of them are written by me too. But between her and I and our team, we try to keep you fed with lots of great questions that's going to be valuable on your journey. Definitely say hi in the comments so we can see them, we can start interacting, we can start engaging. And that's what this is all about because these are the questions that you sent in and said were your biggest course creation questions. So we wanted to take the time this Saturday to address them. All right. Yes. So yes, um, thanks for hopping on. And um, yeah, we asked for your kind of most pressing course creation questions and we got a lot of great um a lot of great questions, so we're excited to kind of do this. Um, so first we have Jillian, and she asks, what's the single most underestimated aspect of online course creation uh, that can make or break its success? 100%. Um, and that's a great question, Jillian. And what I would say is that most people would say that it's the marketing, but I don't actually believe that's the case because everybody knows they got to market and sell their online courses. And I've got a lot of great strategies to make marketing and selling your course as simple as possible, even if you don't have an email list, even if you don't have a following, even if you don't want to do any fancy marketing campaigns. But I think the thing that people underestimate the most is what it actually takes to get someone a result. Does that make sense? I think it's actually harder to support someone in making a major life change than it is to get someone to give you their money. So what I mean by that is that someone Paying you money to join your online course is just the beginning of their journey with you. And your reputation, your future sales, your business success, all the testimonials and refuse and repeat sales depend on you and your ability to get someone engaged and deliver the result that you promise. And I think a lot of people go into course creation because they just love something, right? Or you've got knowledge or you've got expertise, or you've got a passion or you've got some life experience you wanna share, you wanna help, you wanna teach. And you know, it, there's a difference between having all of that and actually delivering that result to somebody else, if that makes sense. And the good news is that a lot of times the people with the biggest depth of experience and the most uh, you know, rich knowledge are not so good at translating that knowledge to be accessible to someone else, not just intellectually, but to translate it into doable steps and then motivating someone to take action. And that's really been a huge focus of mine is creating not just regular online courses, but experience products that drive people to life-changing action. And recently I actually took a step back and I calculated and I realized, oh my goodness, I've actually inspired over 500,000 hours of life-changing human action through my courses and through my programs. And I'm more proud of that number than the tens of millions of dollars I've made and you know all the people that I've helped because it's really about not just getting people to pay me money, but delivering a result that's at least two to five times, if not 10 times the value of what someone invested in me. So let me know in the chat if that's making sense because I think this is the thing that people underestimate. You know, they create a course, they even sell the course, but then once you get real people in your course, how do you actually completely rock their world? And you can rock the world around doing simple things like learning how to play the guitar, learning how to bake French pastries, and we've had students teach both of those things. You can also rock the world around learning, say, English as a second language, or around finding their soulmate, or around learning how to meditate, or grow their business. There's so many ways that you can just elevate someone's life, whether you're giving them a little bit of happiness and pleasure in the moment, or whether you're helping them completely change the course of their future. 
So that's really what people are paying for these days, especially as so many courses are flooding the market and people are generating content on AI with a couple clicks of the keyboard. So what matters these days is not information. It's not the transfer of information and knowledge because people expect that to be free over on Google and ChatGPT and YouTube. But what they want to pay you money for is actually getting them that specific result or transformation, which is why that's as important as anything else. And I would argue the reason that I've grown my business year after year after year after year since I started 12 years ago isn't just because I've become a better marketer, right? Or I've got great ideas. Those two things are true, but it's because I've got an almost obsessive commitment to my students and giving everything I can and doing everything that I can to support you on your journey versus just trying to build a business with online courses. And I always love this quote by Zig Ziglar, that you can have everything in life you want if you'll just help enough other people get what they want. And I feel like that narrative, that conversation is the conversation that's not being had in this industry. A lot of people are talking about how to make money with courses, but not a lot of people are talking about how do you do well by doing good. All right, over to you, Shannon. I love that. Okay. So then we have um, Don, he wants to know what courses are the most popular and who are buying these courses? Beautiful, beautiful. So you may have seen me post my 20 most profitable online course mega niches, right? And I think I can share my screen to kind of show you this really quickly, uh, or at least um, a little snapshot of this. But let me see if I can do this really quickly. Yeah, I think I, I see the button to do it right now. This is our very first Facebook Live of, for a, of many. So we got to get used to doing all the different things again as well. And Shannon just dropped it in the chat. Okay, Shannon just dropped the link into the chat. And I am going to go ahead and click on the right tab. Okay, here it is. Boom. So this is the 20 most profitable online course Mega Ganesha's. And I think you can see it here on the screen right now. And inside, you'll find all 20. But as you can see, it's things like health and wellness. Health and wellness is one of four, what I call Mega Mega Niche, right? In addition to health and we wellness, I would say business and career and it is another really big one. And then so is personal development, and so is love and relationship. Those are the four biggest, but that doesn't mean you need to be in one of the four biggest. If you're in any of these 20, including something much smaller like style and beauty, you can be successful because these are the kinds of um, topics that people are buying. These 20 mega niches, of course, have a lot of micro niches within them, and these are just a few examples of some of those micro niches, and there are literally hundreds of examples, even thousands within each mega niche that you can be profitable in. So I would say start with the mega niche category, and then you want to drill down into the micro niche or your specific topic within this larger bucket. And that's actually what I help you do in our upcoming Crack Your Course Idea Challenge, which I only deliver live for free once a year. So you're definitely going to want to take part in that because I'm going to help you make that leap from what is the big bucket to what is that much smaller topic within. And a lot of people don't get nearly focused enough because here's the thing. I mean, there's a bazillion people who have weight loss courses. Am I right? Like a lot of people in health and wellness working on weight loss. But if your approach to weight loss is, for example, through ketosis, that is different. It's not just a generic weight loss program right? Or maybe your weight loss um, technique is using something from the Navy SEALs. I'm just giving you example. Or you're a famous um, like beauty pageant contestant, and you had a weight loss routine that you followed to be able to stay on stage. You see, all of those are different angles that you can bring to your course to, make, um, to inspire people to buy them and to differentiate yourself. Now, in terms of who are buying online courses, I would argue that the whole world <laughs> is buying online courses. This is a billion dollar a day industry. And within the ne next decade, people anticipate it to be a trillion dollar industry. Make sense? So it's going to go from like $365 billion right now to a trillion dollars in about a decade. And I would argue that the lion's share of all learning in the future 
is going to happen online, whether it's more um, at a traditional education, childhood education, elementary school, high school, college, post-secondary school, whatever that happens to be, whether it's education within corporate to onboard and reskill and upskill people, whether it's elective education for adults who want to develop a new skill set, you know, in their lives, whatever it happens to be, there's all kinds of online education. So there's so many applications. Uh, I've got students who are working with government agencies. You know, one of my uh, Experience Product Masterclass grads, Brian Hirsch, is doing courses inside of governmental agencies to help them develop their agile scrum capability for that particular kind of project management, you see? So there's so many applications. There are giant buyers like huge corporations. My student Francois Soro sold 120 license of his Outlook Like a Pro course into just one corporation. And then you've got individual buyers, you know, ranging from people in their teens to people in their 80s and 90s. It's really across the spectrum. This is like a cradle to cradle industry where all kinds of people in all demographics in all countries around the world are investing in online courses. So you gotta start with that big mega niche and just, you can download this for free, this guide, and then you narrow down into the specific micro niche. And we get even more specific than what you see here in the um, crack your course idea challenge. We'll help you come up with what I call your core solution. This is the micro niche, but then you wanna go a layer down even more get to the core solution, then match that solution to your target audience or who's going to buy it. And I give you seven criteria to do that, seven things you want to make sure that you're doing to so these things line up, that you're actually creating something for an audience who wants to buy it, okay? And then we're even going to work on the promise of what your course is all about, which is the selling proposition, all right? So definitely, definitely join us there. Awesome. Yes, so I've dropped the link to join the challenge in the chat. So make sure after this you sign up and we'll see you on Wednesday. Uh -oh. oh, let's see. Sorry, <laughs> I wanted to remove the mega niche. Um, oh, I see. <laughs> You're back. Yes. We're, working out, we're working out the, uh, the kinks right now. <laughs> Yes, this is our test Facebook Live. So thank you for everyone who's engaging with us. And, um, you know, someone wrote, makes sense, need them to get results. And I think there's a little trick that people actually have to do in order to be able to, for us to see their names here. Yes. Is that right? What is uh, yes. it that they have to do? Um, let me drop that. Yeah, you have to actually do something. <laughs> Shannon's going to drop in. I don't know what that is. Yeah, it takes... It just as letting StreamYard see um, Facebook Live comments so that we can see the see your name. Um, it yes. takes like two seconds. We can see your comments now, but they're not attached to names. Yeah. So if you actually click this link, then you can kind of authorize Facebook to pass over your name, so our streaming technology can see it. So let's keep going. Let's answer some more questions. Yeah, we've got some good ones here. Okay, so we got a great question from Mangla who wants to know what's the best way to start selling a course? Or are there any first steps to take? 100%. So the best way to start selling a course is actually before you create the course. Okay. And the reason why I say that is a lot of people spend a lot of time in total isolation, sometimes six months or a year, recording everything versus pre validating your idea with your market ahead of time. And that's super dangerous because you could run the risk of creating the wrong thing. And if you can imagine all that time and all that effort, and then someone doesn't want what you have to offer. So I recommend before you get too attached for a particular idea that you actually go out there and you validate that idea with real people. And I got to grab something. <laughs> well, uh, I've got all of my, my teaching models next to me so I can pull out the right model at the right time here. So yeah. Here it is. So, oops, that's the wrong one. <laughs> yes. Here it is. Okay. I had my housekeeper come yesterday. So this is your circle of influence. And I've got a newer version of this. I got to get printed. But you want to start towards the center of your circle in of influence with friends, associates, and friends of friends, because marketing is easier over here, right? And a lot of people start to try to go out with like cold traffic and total strangers and other people's audiences. But the thing is, 
the farther out you go from the center of your circle of influence, the more you have to have your idea and your marketing completely dialed in before anyone's going to give you the time of day. So I say use your, the center of your circle of influence to just dial in that idea before you start to make it and get pre-sales. And this is actually the process that I teach in my experience product masterclass. It's this kind of center loop. I call it the rapid success loop where they really take this minimum viable product approach and you launch it with the core amount of information you need for someone to say yes, you get the pre-sales and then you get paid, which is awesome. You get paid to create your course. And that honestly is not only um, a risk-free way to do it because you already have the money in the door before you build everything, but it also lights a fire under you to get it done. Because what I find is that without that constraint where you've got a deadline to deliver to somebody, many people spend six to 12 months creating something, right? But when you know you got to ship something the next week, you just get it done. And a lot of times it's just as good as it would have been if you had agonized it over a long time. Plus, I do recommend a lot of times the first time you deliver something, you don't pre-record it all. If you're comfortable going on a live Zoom and then you can see the chat going as you deliver your content, and you could do this over a whole series of Zooms, you don't have to do it all at once, then you actually start to see what do people resonate with and what do people not resonate with. And then you can use that to adjust and to adapt and realize things that you thought were clear aren't clear or things that you thought were important people don't care about or things that you didn't think were important. People are like, where is this thing? How do I know this thing? You know, there's a lot of questions that people have for me that I, I'm like, I didn't think this was a big deal, this particular question, right? But then everyone needs to know that before they can move on. So I iterated my course over and over again like this. And before I went and pre-recorded and made that investment, because it's a huge time investment and money investment, I did it in this more minimum viable product approach. And now, once I've dialed in and kind of got the thing in the can and the fancier, you know, in a fancier way, people are like, wow, it's like you're reading my mind step by step. I'm like, that's not an accident. <laughs> it's because I did something in this minimum viable way first so I could get that feedback. And the amazing thing is, is that first group of students, I still have a close relationship with a lot of them because, you know, you think it might not be an advantage, but they get so much more of you. They get more access. And there's this energy of being on the ground floor of something as it's being created that's super fun and super engaging. So a lot of times when something is less perfect and it's less polished and people feel like they're participating in the creation of it, it's actually a huge advantage. It's benefit that no one's going to have in the future. So these early students get more access to you. There's an energy of it. And people love that. So this is the approach that I teach my students in the Experience Product Master class. And it really helps them step into their course, get it out, use their center of influence to sell their first copies. Because I believe that every single person has, uh, you know, you know enough people already, no matter who you are, how introverted you are, how antisocial you are, where in the world you live, no matter all that, you've encountered enough people over the course of your life that you can get in touch with in some way, shape, or form. Whether it's, you know, you've got them on your phone and you can text them or you can call them, whether you're connected on social, whether you have a mutual friend who can reintroduce you. You've got enough people who you have encountered over the course of your life to launch profitably at least, you know, a couple times, right? And it take your business probably to about $100,000 a year mark if your idea is dialed in, which is why you want to join the Crack Your Course Idea Challenge. Because if your idea is dialed in, nope even your best friends ain't going to buy this, right? <laughs> so if your idea is dialed in, you got enough people that you're already connected with to reach that $100,000 level. And then once you do that, you got more money to invest in things like traffic, you know, ads, things like that. But a lot of times what happens is people invest in all those things. They don't have a dialed in idea. They just waste or lose that money, right? And then it becomes a really expensive, challenging proposition. And so I've got approaches and campaigns to help you tap into resources that you already have to sell your course, to deliver your course, and to do it as quickly and easily as possible. Yeah. And I'm going to be teaching a whole bunch of stuff right now, like the challenge and the Megan Eve PDF. I'm going to give you a lot that's going to help you, you know, take some of these ideas and get going with them. Awesome. All right. 
So next we have, okay. So we got this question from Bruce um, and I thought it was just absolutely speaks to our current times of AI. <laughs> and yes, how much influence or damage do you think AI programs like ChatGPT, Jasper and others are going to have on online courses in the upcoming foreseeable future? And how do you think it's going to affect the marketplace and student and clients trust and desire to participate going forward? Yeah, well, those are two questions. I'm gonna put the trust question aside for a moment and just talk about the impact of AI first. So AI is going to um, exacerbate something that's already been happening, which is the devaluation of knowledge and information. You know, already people feel like they can find almost anything they want to know for free on YouTube, you know, or on Google or even in chat GPT right now. Like you can type in almost anything and find free content. Am I right? And the creators on YouTube get paid because of advertising dollars. So you don't even have to pay for it. They still find a model in order for those people to get paid. So if you're trying to pay for the same thing, or sorry, get, if you're trying to get someone to pay you for the same stuff that they're going to be able to find for free in YouTube or ChatGPT or whatever it happens to be, they're not going to do it. And even if your course is a bit better because it kind of lays it out, they don't have to cobble it together between different videos, it's still not enough to have people forking over large amounts of money. So you have to differentiate by giving people things they can't get for free. It doesn't mean there's no information or knowledge transfer within your course or program. It just means that you don't stop at information and knowledge transfer. You add on what I call the experience formula and the experiential elements, right? I have a whole formula that I'm going to be teaching you in an upcoming workshop. You add these 10 core experiences. You avoid these 10 anti-experiences. So what you do is you're creating an experiential course, right? Where there's feedback loops. People feel like they're part of a process. And sometimes you got to go beyond just pre-recorded, you know, automated content as well. That sort of evergreen content that you pay 50 bucks for or whatever, $100 for, and then people just, um, you know, go through it on their own. I think a lot of that industry will be impacted. You know, for example, masterclass.com, a huge training company, they charge $10 for 180 courses and they've had to do two rounds of layoffs in the last year because that kind of course that's just a bunch of knowledge and information that's not actionable, that isn't designed to get someone a particular result or solve a particular problem or whatever it happens to be, those kind of courses are going to start becoming completely free, you know? But the courses where you actually take people step by step through a process to get them a specific result or help them overcome a challenge or help them feel something new or do something new or achieve something that they couldn't have done on their own, that goes also goes beyond information and that is experiential, that's still going to work. I mean, I've got people investing up to $20,000 to join me for a five-day workshops these days in person, right? On location in places like Lake Como, okay? So I have people investing $20,000 and we get huge projects done in that time frame. So that kind of experience, premium experience, those ones are still gonna be super valid you know, when you're able to help someone complete something really big and really important to them. And actually, it doesn't even have to be big and important. It could be small and frivolous, right? It doesn't really matter, but that it's tangible, it's concrete, right? It's something specific. Those are still going to be around for a long time. And the more fun you make it and the more engaging you make it and the more two-way you make it, even if your topic is serious, even if you're in a professional environment, the better it's going to be. So the way that I've been teaching courses since 2016 for the last six, seven years, and I got to tell you, when I first started teaching experiential courses, everyone thought I was crazy. Like, why go through all that effort to create experiences when you can just like give people a bunch of information and have them pay you a lot of money for it? I was like, yeah, I don't think this is enough because if information alone worked to change our lives, we'd all be living in Googletopia and all the information at our fingertips alone has not allowed us to have everything we want in our lives. So if that's the case, we got to go beyond information, right? So I've been saying this since 2016. And now the market's starting to catch up. So I think it's less that the market for online education is going away because as I said earlier, it's going to be a trillion dollar a year industry 
within a decade. It's already over a billion dollars a day, right? Right now. So clearly people are investing in online education. The question is what kind of online education are they investing in, right? Not the kind of courses that are being pumped out by AI. Now, here's the thing. AI can still contribute and help brainstorm and help you create content for your course. But you can't just say, all right, AI, push a button, you know, course done, give me a thousand bucks. Like that's not going to fly anymore, right? So you can still use AI as a tool for the brainstorming content creation capacity to support you in getting your experience product done faster and easier. But you need to take it up a notch by delivering things that people can't already find for free on ChatGPT, on YouTube, on Google. Okay, so, um, okay, that's awesome. That's exciting, uh, the opportunity, just, you know, help to help transform people's lives. And Sandaya asks, what's the best way to structure an online course? Yeah. So the way that I teach online courses, um, which is all about people saying yes to a mission, which is one specific problem or solution that you deliver, you, you solve or deliver through your course, all the way across the finish line to mission accomplished, and create what I call unstoppable momentum along the way, is that the way you structure a course isn't necessarily linear and logical. So a lot of people say, okay, you start with the first step, you go to the second, you go to the third. But the problem is, is that a lot of times the first step is really boring, right? Or it's challenging. And if you start there, you're gonna lose people before they've gained any momentum whatsoever. So I'm gonna give you an example. One of my students was creating a course on how to get your music licensed on television and movies, right? And so the very first step that he had in the course was a logical step. It was to go out and like fill in some applications on these different, you know, studio websites to become eligible to submit your music. So he was asking, you know, creative musicians to do a bunch of paperwork as the first step. And so logically that makes sense. But you are not creating courses for artificial intelligence, you know, <laughs> you're creating courses for humans. So I recommend having the first step really in, in to structure your course in a motivational way, which is how do you ramp people up through small, simple steps to larger steps, right? Small steps, small wins, larger steps and larger wins. So you escalate them and you build someone's clarity and confidence and capacity along the way because you want to give people challenge commensurate it with their skill, right? Something that anyone can do. So you want to start getting this kind of action reward cycle going and having people build momentum. And this is all stuff I'm going to be talking about over the next week or two in my challenge and my online course creators workshop series. I do all of this for free once a year. All right. And we have like 55,000 people registered last year. So a lot of people come to learn and I just give as much as I possibly can. Many of them continue on and take my experience product masterclass. But even if you just listen to all the free content, you'll get a massive, massive amount of value. OK, so really what you want to think about is how do you make that first step and reinforce the core promise or mission? So Back to that music example, I suggested, because he was having a lot of drop off, that instead of have people go fill out paperwork, that instead what he'd do is actually have people create their dream 50 list of the 50 TV shows that they would just be thrilled to be on, that being on a single one of them would be a huge win and make the entire investment worthwhile, okay? So what that was doing is when people did that, anyone could do it because I said, go a step further. Give them everything they need so they don't have to go and do research and figure out, well, what TV shows accept submissions? Compile the complete comprehensive list of all the TV shows that accept submission by genre. So all people have to do is go boop, 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 boop. All of a sudden, they're like, boom, here's my dream 50. Now they've got a vision that they're working for. And every time they put a name on the list, it's like bing, 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 bing. Possibility, 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 possibility. So the finish line of actually getting a song on accepted to a TV show, it's like always there as a carrot being held out before them. Can you see the difference between the two? So, so many people start to structure their course logically or linearly versus motivationally. 
And I'm kind of an, a super geek where I've studied kind of things like behavioral design. How do you get people inspired to take action? And a lot of people, people think of, of what's called function-focused design. You know, that's that you do this and this and this versus human-focused design of understanding that no you know, plan survives contact with the customer, right? <laughs> no course survives contact with the customer. And you've got to understand that people are busy, they're conflicted, they've got fears, they've got doubts, they've tried and they failed again before. And so what do you need to give them to really ramp them up? And I got a lot of models for this that I teach, but that's kind of the core concept in terms of how to structure your course, which is very different than what most people say, like write five modules and then boom, boom, boom. Yeah, yes, and. There's more to it than that if you really wanna deliver the transformation, build an incredible reputation, have people referring their friends and signing up to work with you over and over again. Awesome. And then we got a question from Rose and um, this is, I think one of the most common issues that people who want to create a course have, and it's basically kind of a kitchen sink course. So she doesn't want to leave anything out, but she has so much knowledge. And so how do you decide, you know, what to keep in and what to leave out in your yeah. course? Well, that all comes down to the product mission statement. Okay. So I describe the product mission statement as the finish line. And you want it to be so clear and specific, you could photograph someone crossing the finish line of mission accomplished, which means it has to be visual. It has to be specific. It's not like everything you need to know about an online business. I mean, where would you even start? And the, the beauty about that is that it allows you to create more than one course, right? So you don't have to put your entire knowledge and life experience into one course. And I tried to do that when I first got started because I had good intentions. I just wanted to give everything to everybody, but nobody made it through. It was just too much for them to hold. So you want to break it up into these missions and then you can stack missions. So um, <laughs> I teach this at my annual Live Your Message Live event. It's my message to money pathway. And basically, you sequence one mission to the next to the next. So when someone finishes a mission, they can see the next one available to them. And a lot of times what happens is when someone crosses one finish line, they've got a new, bigger problem or challenge or opportunity, as the case may be. So when students finish my Experience Product Master class and they've designed, launched, and profited from an experiential course, then their new, bigger challenge is, okay, great. Now, how do I build a whole business around this, right? I, I show them the frameworks at Live Your Message Live. And they're like, amazing. Now, how do I get step-by-step -step guidance along the way? Well, join my momentum program. Beautiful. I'm now making consistent income. Great. Join the next level, right? That's going to help you get to six figures. I'm making six figures. Amazing. Join the next level designed to help you get to seven figures. You're making seven figures. Amazing. Join our ascend level to help you take your business to multi-million dollars. Does that make sense? So I've got this whole customer journey that has these sequencing missions. And don't get me wrong. It's not like I'm withholding anything. It's just that one course, one mission. Make sense? And if you try to give too many missions, build what I call the, the multi-point course, it's just confusing. Nobody buys it. Or if they do buy it, it's overwhelming and they don't complete it. So our good intentions oftentimes hold us back from seeing the progress that we really want and actually genuinely being of service. And we forget how many decades it took us to gain that knowledge. And we expect people to be able to like absorb all of it in what six weeks or 12 weeks, it's impossible, right? I can't teach someone everything that I know about business and marketing and course creation in my 12-week program. Now I can help them design and launch and profit from a course, but then you can go another level and another level and another level beyond that and build, like me, a nearing an eight-figure business. Does that make sense? So there's so much you can do within your core topic especially if you start to break it out into more bite-sized, doable chunks. Amazing. Great. And then um, Evangeline's also asking a question that we see all the time. Um, so she says, I've, I have proven content, so that's not my issue, but I have a fear of tech. How can I get yeah. over that? And <laughs> all right, I'm going to say something. It's going to sound superficial on the surface, but, but let me explain it. And the honest truth is just, is to honestly, the only way to get over fear is to just do the thing that you're scared of doing. 
And then you realize it wasn't as bad as you thought it was. And it might be bad. And also to understand that the first time you do something is the worst time you're ever going to do it. Okay. Because you're doing something new and your brain's like, hey, I don't have synapses for this. Right. But the other thing is, is that I teach people what I call an MVP approach, which is a minimum viable product plus minimum viable marketing and minimum viable technology. And I've had students bring in up to $750,000 from one MVP launch using minimum viable product, minimum viable marketing, minimum viable technology. We tend to overcomplicate what we think that we need in order to do something. And the truth is that you can ramp up to that you know, more technologically robust program later on, but use the bare essentials to get going. You know, we certainly do things like we build the membership site for our students inside of the Experience Product Masterclass. We do weekly Get It Done Friday calls to help th lead them step by step through any kind of tech piece that you may need. But we also say all along, keep it as simple as possible and ask, well, do you really even need this at this point? So you can remove the hurdles to just getting going versus adding hurdles that don't even need to be there. Make sense? Definitely. Um, okay, and we've actually got a question in the chat, so I'm going off book a bit. Um, so we have a user asking, how do we validate our topic that doesn't resonate with our inner circle? It's super niche. Um, yeah, well, in that particular case, you might need to go a little beyond into, say, friends of friends and other people's audiences, right? So that's where you might have to just stretch in to kind of reach out to people that Ideally, you're connected with in some way, but sometimes you can reach out to people who have your audience and then have them put you in front of their audience. So you can sometimes jump rings of the circle of influence in situations like that. That's why I think having coaching and support and mentorship and guidance on this journey is so important because every core principle, sometimes it's different. Uh, for different programs and courses. It's like 80, 90%, it's going to be like this. And then there's like the 10 to 20% where it's the exception to the rule, right? And so that's a place where it could be an exception to the rule. If your kind of circle isn't part of that niche, you might not be able to start there. However, you might know people in your circle who know people who are part of your niche. So that's where you can still follow the chain of connections and be surprised at where you can start. But even if you're going outside of your circle of influence, you can still use some of the simpler forms of marketing to do it. You know, you don't have to all of a sudden go into like cold traffic targeting or something like that, right? So there's a lot of different ways. I actually teach step-by-step -step approaches with templates and what to say at each stage and all of that stuff as well. But that's kind of the core principle behind it. Awesome, amazing. Okay, and we have a great question from Greg about messaging. So speaking, you were talking about Live Your Message Live. Um, so he attended Live Your Message Live and it was great. My big takeaway was about the flags and if your message is either green, yellow, or red for most people. Can you talk more about how to be more green and red with your message without trying to be too extreme? I definitely don't want a yellow. So I don't really want to give away what we do at Live Your Message Live on that particular question. Um, but what I will say when it comes to messaging is that you want, need to stand out. And the first way to stand out is through the process of micro niching. Okay. That's something that we're going to do in the crack your course idea challenge. All right. We're going to micro niche. So what that means is that a lot of people stay really big and broad and up here, meaning they're like spirituality, personal development, time management, and they sound like everybody else, right? So it's like, eh, whatever, done there, been there, had that, whatever, versus the more specific you get, the more you feel like you're joining the inner dialogue in a real person's head, a particular target audience's head, that in and of itself is going to have people lean in and be curious, does that make sense? It's also going to have people lean out and be like, not for me, right? Because when your message gets more specific, both in terms of the topic and in terms of the audience, then it's really um, kind of uh, spotlighting who it's for and who it's not for. So simply doing that, really targeting and getting focused and getting specific and making choices will naturally do that. And then once you have that, you know, this is what I call uh, your level four marketing message. 
And let me see, I think I've got things just spread out all over the place. So once you have that, you know, your niche, you understand what you offer and who you serve, then you can start differentiating to what I call the tribal level of messaging, which is how you're different to the people you serve. All right. That's when you start adding more personality and color to it. And then you figure out, well, how are your offers different? You get more focused on the unique value that you've got. But you want to build that message step by step. So starting with the fundamental niche, micro niche, is going to get you into the ballpark. OK, but only once you have that dialed in, do you want to get super cute and clever? Because I always say clear is better than clever. OK, so the clarity is what you want to go for first. Once that's dialed in and people are like, oh, my gosh, you're reading your mind, you're, my mind, you're speaking truth, then you can start to add the next level, all right, of personality into your messaging. So I teach this at my annual Live Your Message event, first weekend of March, how to kind of build that message layer by layer. All right. Awesome. We did get another question in the chat. Um, how do you feel? I, I believe this is from Susan. Um, how do you feel about doing a beta program in a live Zoom format first before formalizing the video course version? Yeah, we actually spoke about this earlier already on this particular Facebook Live. If you want to go back, I recommend that. I recommend that. You know, there are definitely approaches to doing that, and there's still common elements that you need. But I highly recommend beta testing your actual course content and not just beta testing the marketing with real people because you want to work out the kinks and dial in the content before you invest the time and the money to really pre-record everything and all of that. So that's 100% my recommendation. It's what I teach my students. Yeah. Awesome. OK, and then last question. Uh, and you kind of touched on this throughout the live, but just any final tips on narrowing down a topic and subject? Samantha has spent years trying to figure this out. Honestly, that's exactly what I go over on my Crack Your Course Idea Challenge. And I've distilled down a decade of teaching tens of thousands of people how to do exactly this into 15 to 30 minutes a day for five days. And it's completely free. And it's a five-step process. You can go sign up for it right now at liveyourmessage.com forward slash challenge. And once you register, I also give you the opportunity to purchase our Instant Clarity Toolkit for $7. And these are three AI tools that I've custom crafted to help make suggestions and generate ideas around three of the more challenging steps in this process. So if you're coming up against just a wall on your own ability to kind of generate thoughts and ideas that are specific and clear and resonant, then these three AI tools will really help you do that. And I cannot believe how many people are signing up for these AI tools. It's kind of crazy. You know, I just offered this for the first time because it was never possible before. And we've already sold 422 of these instant clarity toolkits, right? And this is the first, like, um, you know, we have maybe 4,000 people signed up for the challenge and counting right now, which starts on Wednesday. But everyone's like, give me the tools. I want the tools. More power, more easily, right? More clarity. And that is awesome. So I hope you'll join us because, honestly, I could try to give you a, a five minute answer, but you really need to go through this 60 minute process. And it includes the worksheets and all of the different things like that. You can have the tools as well. So if you want to just do it and you've been struggling for years and years and years on this, then my two minute answer isn't going to help you get there. But my crack your course idea challenge will help you get there a lot faster. All right. Definitely. And also we'll be going, um, Reese and I will be going live this group for the challenge. Um, and we'll also have a live Zoom coaching call on day four. And that's your chance to get Marisa's like input and feedback to make your idea even better. Um, so, so you definitely, the value in this challenge for free is just insane. <laughs> It, it is insane. I actually have a mini course version of this challenge that people are going to be paying for uh, other than this one time a year when I give it away for free. OK, and I just want to help you get going and get that clarity. And then I'm going to do a seven day um, online course creators workshop series that starts the week um, after the challenge. So I'm going to be teaching workshops. I'm going to be giving away so much to really help you get going. All right. Awesome. Well, thanks everybody for hopping on live with us. Um, we appreciate it. And we'll see you in the challenge. Thank you. Bye y'all.